Look at your under sheet. And Shia. And Penny too. And Mr. Allen. And Mr. Allen. And Mr. Allen. And Mr. Allen. I'm going to be telling you guys things about the Embody that nobody else knows and I'm going to be covering aspects about this chair that I just don't see in other reviews. Let's get honest. So what can I tell you about the Embody that nobody else can? Well, I have a really good relationship with the folks over at Atlas Headrest. And for those of you guys who don't know who Atlas Headrest is, they're a company that whose high level staff and founders are ex Herman Miller employees. And they sought out to make a headrest for the Herman Miller Aeron because Herman Miller does not make headrest for the Aeron. So they created a literal pound for pound, spec for spec, exact identical match of the pellicle mesh, plastic colors, everything. So their headrest looks like it was a, it, like Herman Miller designed it themselves. So I tell you guys all this because as soon as I got this chair, I texted Andrew and I said, Andrew, I got my Embody. I love my Embody. Now tell me you guys are making a headrest. Please, I need a headrest for this chair. And they just said, good things come to those who wait. Now, if you guys press me in the comments, I can reveal just a little bit more. So let me know if you guys are interested. Okay, so I wanna go through this chair, but I wanna do it differently. Everybody has reviewed this chair already. So I wanna talk about things that nobody else talks about. And the first thing starts with this back. I just feel like people haven't given it the coverage that it deserves. Now, if you look at it, just the design looks like this crazy spine thing. And when I first saw it, I was kinda like, that is pure aesthetic that doesn't really have anything functional. At least I didn't think. Man, I couldn't have been more wrong. This design by Herman Miller is, I think, my favorite feature about this chair because what's so unique about it is that every other chair has a back that's fixed, which means you sit in it and if your back doesn't fit, then you gotta get a new chair. This is really, really apparent in the gaming chairs. In the typical gaming chairs, I, I reviewed this when I talked about the Secret Lab Omega, when I talked about the Onda Seat, that in that it has a very C shape. It curves your back into a C. The reason why I'm sitting very lightly on this is because this is the opposite of every chair I've sat on in that if I sit, I don't know if you guys can see that. The back lock is on, by the way. If, you, if I, let me try that again. Can you guys see that? It moves with me. That means when you sit in your chair, instead of you having to conform to the chair shape, this chair will conform to you. And it is my favorite aspect. It is so unique. I love it so much. And it's not only good for just sitting because it just, it feels like it's just kind of like adapting to your back. But when you do stretches, man, like you can really, like, and turn side to side, it really just kind of moves with your spine in this incredible way. I, I don't know how to explain it, but I can tell you guys that it is quickly become my favorite feature about this chair. And I just don't see a lot of people talking about it. Now, some reviews have talked about it creaking. Now, this is more apparent on the gaming line than on the standard and body. Let me just stop talking and move around and tell me what, if you guys can hear anything. Now, you guys can hear some creaking, but that is the rubber slash plastic mechanism moving to conform with your spine. Again, super unique feature, something that I absolutely love. The other thing that I think is super unique about this chair, and for those of you who guys who've been eagle-eyed, you might be wondering why I have a guitar back here, and it's because one of the comments I got about the chairs that I reviewed is, hey, can the arms swivel up? And I was like, why? What kind of, like who, what kind of use case is that? Who needs that? And they said, it's because we play guitar in our chairs. And I said, oh, that makes sense. I'm a terrible guitar player. That's why I don't know that, you know, that a chair, I want a chair that does that. Now, look at, look at the Embody's arms. Look at how low they go. This is really awesome because they go so low and they can be in so tight that when I have, and this is a dreadnought guitar. It's one of the bigger body shape of a guitar. I think the Grand Baby is maybe the only thing bigger than this, but this is a Taylor dreadnought. And if I lift the leg up, what enables this is that the front is wide open. It's all padding, which means it's gonna be comfortable no matter how wide you go. I'm covering my, you know, my area with the guitar because you guys comments last time. <laughs> so you guys can go as wide as you want. And if you curl up your legs like this, like an ergonomics rebel, and you just lift up a little bit on the knee, you can put your guitar here. Now, because this is a dreadnought, the butt booty is pretty big. It will crash a little bit into this and raise it, but it's definitely possible.
Yeah. So definitely possible. What else is unique about this chair? The seat. The seat's really unique here because a lot of office chairs that I've used, if it has an adjustable seat pan, the way it works is that you pull a lever and then the seat pan will shift horizontally. Basically, it'll go from being right here next to the back seat and then it'll slide out. The, the problem with that, or at least the, the problem that I foresee is that if you do that, well, you go from a seated position where you were once tucked back and then if your seat pan slides out, what happens is your whole booty and your hips are moving with it so that now you're sitting like this, which is not a good position for your back whatsoever. So instead of that, Herman Miller has come up with a way that you can move the seat pan forward without moving the position of the seat pan. Let me just show you. Basically, look, you're gonna see that where my bottom is, this entire bottom, is not gonna move this way. Instead, it's gonna be like a reverse tongue where I can pull the front out. And that is gonna be awesome for my bigger friends. Now, something you have to keep in mind is that while the Embody is wide, and it can go even wider because the arms, look, it can go from being claustrophobic all the way out to plus size, and that's really awesome. The chair itself is pretty small. Like, in the pictures, I, 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 I thought the Embody was gonna be a lot bigger, but any time somebody sees it, they're like, oh, it's really small. Like, I think you're gonna be shocked by how small it is if you pick one up. So. If you decide that you want to do that, if you decide that, I lost my train of thought here. I got it, I got it. It's that even though the Embody looks tiny, it is designed with bigger folks in mind. Now that is one of the cons that I stated in my other video on how to get an Embody for cheap, or you know, it's how to get Herman Miller chairs, including the Embody for cheap. But now that I sit in it, I realize that this has the flexibility to be for a small guy like me. I'm five foot six, 175 pounds in my birthday suit and um, you know, with short legs. So it can be for guys like me. And I imagine folks that are six feet tall will find this chair pretty comfortable. Now, as soon as you get to six feet and your torso becomes bigger, I assume that a headrest becomes much more important for you because the torso on this, look how high it is. Again, I'm five foot six. You can imagine if somebody is six inches or plus taller than me, then your back is gonna be significantly off the backrest. So Atlas, hurry up, man, let's go, let's go. I'm super excited, I'm super psyched for it. Make sure you guys subscribe because I think they're gonna send me a headrest. I'll go over this more in depth when I do the full comparison of the Embody versus the Classic Aeron versus the Remastered Aeron. Unfortunately, that video is gonna take a while because my office did flood and contractors are just super busy due to the pandemic and everyone trying to fix up their houses. Anyways, not your guys' problem, but I'm gonna talk about in that video how the Embody is a much more forgiving chair. It's a much more comfortable chair compared to the Aeron because the Aeron is meant to be and designed to be an ergonomic chair, meaning you have to sit properly in order for you to get the most use out of it. The Embody is much more forgiving in that you can sit however you want. You can sit straight, you know, ergonomically, perfectly if you want. You can sit cross-legged. And what's amazing is that because the seat pan is so wide and because the arms can stretch out pretty far, you're gonna be comfortable. But it's got a bonus feature where, remember I told you that the lip rolls out like this? If you feel that your feet are kind of slipping down like this, well, extend the seat pan out and now you've got a lot more room. It's, it's perfect for the people who want a lot of flexibility in their chair, who don't just wanna sit in a 90 degree all day. And because of the medley, or because of the rhythm fabric here, I find that it's super breathable because if you touch it, it's not thick. It's not that thick padding found on chairs. It's a very thin layer and yet there's enough cushion, enough flexibility in the booty and in the back that I don't feel like it's uncomfortable or hot at the same time. It's like a really nice middle step between mesh, which is super breathable, and cloth, which is really plush, but not breathable. I feel like it's just this perfect balance, which is ironically a name for another fabric. The final feature that I find super unique about the Embody is the way the lumbar support works. So on most chairs, the lumbar, well, on most chairs, you don't get an adjustable lumbar. It's either like it has it built in or it's nothing at all. The Herman Miller chairs, they do have adjustable lumbar. A lot of mid to high end chairs, they do have lumbar support, but the Embody is really unique in that instead of like the lumbar providing you one area of support 
or just being like a vertical adjustment or just being a you know horizontal press in or depress the embody's entire back will basically tighten in or loosen up let me just let me just demonstrate for you that chair is really squeaky sorry guys i promise i'm not being flatulent there so let me try to show you guys here the knob is on the back right side and i don't know if you guys can see it on camera but let me go ahead and loosen it I'm looking at my monitor. I don't know if I see it, but you guys might see me kind of like sinking back a little bit more. And the reason why that's happening again is because I am loosening. This is fully loosened at this point. Now there is no tension of lumbar whatsoever. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it. And again, hopefully you guys can see this on the camera. And when I tighten it, the entire back is getting tighter. The best way I can say it is like, it kind of feels like air I, I don't know how else to say it but it just feels like the grip on my back my entire back is just getting tighter and it's nice it's nice in the sense that you don't you no longer have to do like a targeted area but that's also one of its weaknesses if there's a specific area for your back where you want additional support this unfortunately cannot target that so that becomes one of the cons about this something that's unique to the embody compared to the Aeron is that when you buy an embody you basically get a chair that's fully loaded there's going to be almost no functional feature missing from the base and body. The only things that are functional that you can add on for additional money are going to be the casters and the fabric, which I talked about just a second ago. So starting from the casters and then we'll work our way up on the chair in terms of features. So these casters, these are the upgraded casters and I can tell you that they're 100% worth it. Like, yeah, they might be expensive, and if you want, you can get rollerblade wheels, which is an upgrade that I still haven't done to my other chairs, which will be cheaper, but I can tell you that these casters, I use them on hardwood, and they make zero noise, and they are 100% stable. It's pretty amazing. Now, this is um, jute carpet, I think, right? And this moves, look, look how easy that moves on jute carpet. Like, jute carpet is like, I don't know, it's pretty rough, but this moves so easily on jute carpet and on hardwood. It's pretty fantastic. Um, the metal here, I don't know, I picked a gray to kind of match the white. That's not really anything. Okay, so moving up here, let's start from the back. This lever is basically going to adjust your level of tilt, your back tilt. And again, that's not something that comes standard with the chair. You don't need to worry about that. That is going to be in full top position. You can't, you just have maybe like a 10 degree tilt, like you got a little bit of rocking. And then the little rest of it is that, oh my God, it's that back again. I love it so much. But that's the first level. The second level is gonna allow you to go down to like 45%. And then the third level is gonna, oh wait, there's four levels. One, one, two. This is gonna allow you to go down to 45%. And this is gonna allow you to go down to like, I don't know what this is, 60, 70%. So pretty, pretty nice. I wish it could go back further um, because if you have the headrest, I would love if you could, could go down a little bit more. And I would love if this chair had the feature that if I was down and I clicked it, that I could stay locked in this position, but I can't. I will say that one of the, even though like a compensation prize, a lot of gaming chairs have that feature, by the way, that you can go down and you can lock your chair in any position. Unfortunately, the Embody cannot do that. The consolatory prize, I think that's what the right word is there, is that you can easily adjust the amount of tension, the back spring tension on this chair by spinning this knob here. If you spin it forward, then it'll tighten it big time, making it much harder. And if you loosen it, it'll let you just kind of fly backwards. So that's the consolatory prize because it's really easy to do. It doesn't take that many turns. And as you can see, I'm not putting any pressure, but I can stay in this position with hardly any usage of muscles in my core or anything like that. So I'm not gonna get tired. So not the greatest. I again, I wish I could lock it in place, but you can't. So that's kind of all there is on the left side. Now on the right side, you've got this crazy looking thing that looks like it was not fully thought out. This is not necessarily the prettiest thing in the world. I showed you this knob a second ago. This is gonna adjust the tension on the back. And then inside there is this clear plastic thing that I thought, to be honest, like mine was missing a piece because I thought that was supposed to be hidden, but it's not. That's the way the chair is designed. And I'll do a close up on this in B-roll. But if you take that and you flick it up, that's gonna be your horizontal, or that's gonna be your um, uh, pneumatic up and down spring, right? Not spring, sorry, that's done by 
pneumatic or I forget what it is actually. So there's that. And uh, it starts very short. Like, look, this is me. Again, I'm five foot six and my feet hit the floor very easily at the base level. So again, designed for short folks and for pretty tall folks. Tall folks. And if I go at the highest level, this is how tall up I am. And my feet are probably about maybe five inches off the ground. So that's what this looks like here. And then in the back here, is again that lumbar support. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it all the way here. And so that is the lumbar support. Okay, now moving up a little bit onto the seat pan. I already showed this to you guys before. This is how you do that reverse tongue on the knees. Right now it is fully extended and the way that you retract it is you actually lift it up and pull it back in. Now, I wanna pause here for a second. The thing about this chair is that there is a lot about this chair that is plastic and that is one of the big cons because it's so plasticky, I'm worried that something's gonna break, right? Like, it doesn't feel like cheap plastic. Everything feels super dense. But my chair has this unique feature. It's not a feature, it's an annoyance, where if I, and maybe I can get it to work here, if I, I, I like to tuck my legs under my chair and just kind of freak out, right? Like, I like to shake my leg. And sometimes there's this plastic that just doesn't actuate. And because every time I do this, it click, it clacks so loud. Oh, now you wanna be stubborn. Yeah. It did it before, I promise, but it would just, every time, the clack, 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 it was so annoying. And I, I did everything I could, I tried fumbling with this and I couldn't fix it. So that is a little bit frustrating, but again, because of the plastic nature of it, I do feel like something might break over time. So this seat thing is probably something you wanna set and maybe not mess with too much. Something to keep in mind. Um, the chair bottom, and this is something I didn't mention, the chair bottom has the same kind of crazy like rubber slash plastic design as the back, which means not only will your back adapt to you, but your booty will also adapt. And again, it is the most incredible feeling ever. Like when you sit in it, it's just kind of like, welcome home booty. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how else to say it. Like, look, do you hear that? Like. That is not what a normal chair sounds like. A normal chair is either gonna be mesh and go boom, 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 or it's gonna be fabric and go boom, 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 right? Like, do you hear that? That's like plastic and rubber mixed together. And the reason why that's so unique is again, because when you sit in it, it just adapts to your booty. It just feels so good. I, I am really just obsessed with this chair. I'm trying to be as objective as possible, but I, I'm just shocked by how good this chair is. This is, yeah, I really like it. Okay. Moving up further, the arms. The arms are a little bit unique. I don't know why I got up. I just gotta sit here. So the arms are unique in that they can go up and down like every other chair. But if you notice, the arms are not going straight up and down like on every other chair. They kind of come inwards a little bit. And then if I wanna move the arms to be closer to me, or this is I think in the closest position, if you wanna move them out, it moves out like this. Oh wait, it's in the furthest out position. It moves in like this, and this is me doing it gently. So look how claustrophobic that is. This is like a seat belt on my rib cage. And then if I wanna move it out, this is what it looks like. Now, I like these arms more than 80% of the chairs out there because a lot of arms have this weird swivel feature like this, which I think is super lame because first of all, the arm position is too wide for me. I'm, again, I'm not a tall guy, I've got short, I've got small shoulders. And because I, when I put my arms down on most chairs, the arms just totally miss me. And then when they swivel inwards, they're swiveling in from a position of the middle. So when they swivel in, it's like, it doesn't help me. It's like my elbows back here will land on it and that's it. This allows you that no matter how wide or how narrow you are, your elbows, and your arms have a place to call home. I really like that design. And again, if you go in, you can see how they've got kind of like a arch like shape as opposed to up and down. I really like that, not everyone will. The downside of this arm design is that it is extremely difficult to move. I don't know if it's gonna loosen up over time, but just listen, like I'm gonna do this, if it's the closest thing to me, like you get no muscle, you have no power from here. Just, like it takes quite a bit of muscle to be able to move them out like that. Inwards is not so much of a problem, but inside to outside becomes a little bit problematic. And also again, because you can feel the plasticiness of it, you feel like, oh man, is this gonna break? I don't know. I don't know guys. So this is not something that I would mess with too much. I know some people have kind of like um, fidgety things and I would not choose this to be the thing you fidget with. Maybe get a fidget toy or something because I can imagine a lot of people just kind of being like, 
and something gonna break, guys. So yeah, keep this, set it, and forget it. Don't mess with it too much. So that's the arms. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't think I'm missing anything else. Yeah. That's it, guys. That's all it is for the features. Now, you can get this in different colorways. I chose to get a white here, and I kind of regret getting this fabric like in the black. I wish I had gotten something more colorful, but at the same time, I'm also kind of like, look, let's be practical. Like, if you get a color, the downsides of having fabric on any chair is that it's gonna absorb more cell smells and it can stain easily. And the reason why I got a black is because I wanted to make sure that it doesn't stain. And this is gonna be really important if you're wearing jeans, if you're wearing bright colored clothes or something where the dye peels off. These, I've seen a lot of chairs on the used market that have stains on the seating and it could just be from use or it could be because you spilled something and you couldn't get it off, which is the reason why I went with black. The other colors are really cool, but that's something you need to be mindful of. Now, this is information that other people don't really share and it's about the used price. Now, I shared this in my other video where you can check out um, the price for every used Herman Miller chair that you can expect to pay, uh, but I'll just share it here. So I have seen embodies, used embodies, go for about $800 used. Now brand new, there can be like $1,500 plus, but in this case, uh, used embodies can go for about $800. Now let me talk about that for a second. $800 seems like a lot of money. The embody seems like a lot of money, but guys, this is something to consider. You spend probably thousands for your back because you're like, I spend a lot of time sleeping. You spend a lot of time sitting as well, at least I, a lot of people do. So it's not that bad. Think about your back, think about the long-term health of your back. And at that point, it's not that crazy of an investment. It's not that crazy to think a chair would cost a thousand plus dollars. Now, I'm not trying to say that everybody should go out and go buy one, but if you are someone who is not in a position to pay $1,500 for a chair, which is totally understandable and totally reasonable, I wanna say, if you're looking for a chair that's gonna be solid and fits most people, try to get a used one. That These are rare on the used market, but the reason why I say get a used one is because an Embody is about $800 used, and if you try to sell it again after a few years, you'll make that $800 back almost guaranteed, or you'll only lose like 100, 150 bucks. That is why Herman Millers are good. Used Herman Millers are so good because very rarely will you buy a used item and be able to sell it for the same price because it's gonna degrade over time. With the Embody, you are gonna be able to resell it for about you know, 800, uh, get that money back basically. Now, it becomes a little bit different if you get one and then it discolors over time or things like that. The other reason why I tell you that you could probably get your money back is because all Herman Miller chairs, brand new, have a 12 year warranty. And as long as you have a sticker on the bottom and you buy it used, all embodies will have their warranty because I believe these were released in 2000, I'm gonna have to check, I'll put it in after the fact, but um, all embodies will have their warranty intact. Now, a lot of people are gonna say like, oh, Herman Miller says warranties are not transferable. I'm just gonna say, use your common sense, okay? Like, don't tell them, hey, I bought this chair off of a shady site off of Craigslist, okay? Don't say that, right? Um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about that, okay? Just use some common sense and you'll be fine. So that's why I think a used in body is gonna be an excellent deal. Overall, I think this is an excellent chair. I'm trying to be as objective as possible. I've never sat in a chair like this before and so much about it is so good. Now, is it worth $1,500? That's gonna be up to you guys, right? That's gonna be up to you to determine is it, but is it worth $800? I'm gonna say yes, emphatically, not because of $800 price tag is cheap, not by any means. It's because, again, you're gonna be able to resell it for the same price and any one that you buy, it's gonna have warranty on it. So as long as it's got the sticker on the bottom. Okay guys, that's gonna do it for this one. Highly recommend you guys check out this chair. If you wanna pick a one up brand new, check out my links below. I am a Herman Miller affiliate, and so if you guys buy through that link, that's gonna help this channel out a lot, as long as you don't click away from the link, cause then it doesn't work anymore. But if you guys are, look, are looking to pick one up new, please use those affiliate links, and uh, make sure you guys subscribe for more news about the Atlas headrest for this chair. Fingers crossed, guys, it comes sooner than later. Fingers crossed, I'm gonna be able to share more information soon. And until next time, guys, stay safe, and as always, stay honest.